Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm so glad that you can join us for uh, the, the, as we pray the Catholic Mass. Um, this weekend, we are celebrating the 30th week in ordinary time. So the liturgical year is, is beginning to draw to a close, and uh, this week we have the 30th week. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare, for, prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Shout with joy for Jacob, exalt at the head of the nations. Proclaim your praise and say, The Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them back from the land of the north. I will gather them from the ends of the world. With the blind and the lame in their midst, the mothers and those with child, they shall return as an immense throng. They departed in tears, but I will console them and guide them. I will lead them to brooks of water on a level road so that none should stumble. For I am a father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, the Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with, with joy. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. 
The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and the erring, for he himself is beset by weakness. And so for this reason must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, You are my son, on this day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up, Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his coat, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday, or uh, Friday, we had a uh, wedding in our parish and um, we actually had a guest priest come to do the wedding. He was friends of, of the couple getting married. And uh, this, this priest, he was actually only just ordained this past May. And this was only going to be his second wedding he's ever done. So he was a little nervous and um, a little bit unsure. He's still trying to figure out himself how to do weddings, let alone how to, um, how to, how to lead the, the married couple through the wedding. So um, I had two of our altar servers uh, assigned and you know there is, it, it, I do find it amusing because among the older servers we have both boys and girls and um, they, they all do a good job but the girls are so into the weddings when they're serving a wedding and I do think it's funny like after the wedding sometimes they're like old ladies in the back and they're they're talking all about you know well what what did they think of the bridesmaids dresses and what did they think of the bride's hair and what about the music and and everything 
Sometimes I think it's because maybe they were raised as princesses that they are so used to princess weddings that they're, they're just all into it. But I assigned the two girls for Father Kevin's wedding because I knew they would be in on it. And, and, and I told them beforehand, look, if Father Kevin gets to, forgets to do any parts, just remind him. And I knew they would be on it. And little known fact, but You May Kiss the Bride is not actually in our book. That's a part that we just have to know. That's when that comes. So I told him, I said, if they say, if he forgets to say, kiss the bride, remind him. And they said, that's the best part, kiss the bride. You know, it's so neat uh, that actually he did say, he did forget to say, kiss the bride. And Megan did remind him. Um, but the fact that they share in that moment, those, the, those little altar servers, that they're so excited about it, that they're so involved, and that they are so joyful, it makes everything about the wedding better. And, you know, they realize that they aren't really the most important part of the wedding, but they know that they have a part, and their part to play is really important. You know, in our readings, and especially when we get toward, you know, this end of the liturgical year, 30th, 32nd, 33rd, 34th Sunday, you know, the readings become more about um, the end times and the struggles that we face. But there's also joy mixed in, and these readings tap into that. You know, in the first reading, we hear from Jeremiah, who is not overly known for being joyful himself. And he says to the people of of, of Israel, shout with joy, you know, exalt in the Lord, proclaim your praise, and say the Lord has delivered his people. In the responsorial psalm, we hear the Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. And all of that usually points to the gospel. And here we have in the gospel today, Jesus Christ himself He has a crowd following him. He's leaving Jericho. They are in the presence of the Lord, in the presence of the Messiah. And there's there's reason for great joy among them. And yet, they seem to be unable to tap into the moment. That when they encounter Bartimaeus, you know, the poor uh, man begging by the side of the road, um, they're, they're unable to share their joy that they have found in Jesus with him. You know, they're pushing him aside, be quiet, get out of our way. Luckily, Jesus was able to hear Bartimaeus crying out, son of David, have pity on me, have mercy on me. And luckily, as Jesus drew him closer, Bartimaeus himself was to have his own encounter with the Lord, despite the fact that the people were trying to keep him away. And when Bartimaeus received his sight, Lord, I want to see, Jesus tells him something I I think is really interesting. He says to Bartimaeus, go on your way. Your faith has healed you. But the very next line, St. Mark tells us what what he does. He says, immediately he received his sight, and he followed Jesus on the way. After that encounter with Jesus, Bartimaeus could not see his way through life as anything other than following Jesus. Following Jesus now was his way. You know, as a a whole church family, as we come here together online, as we pray together, I hope what we can do is, first of all, ourselves be people of joy, even in the midst of struggle. We have Jesus Christ present to us, the same Lord that was there coming out of Jericho. But I also hope that we can find it in our joy and in our hearts to understand that it is meant to be shared. Pray for those who are on the sides of of the way of faith. Maybe, Maybe invite and include others to join you and us in prayer. Encourage people to find their way to church because that's a sure way to find your way to Jesus. And who knows, maybe by being able to capture that moment and appreciate the moment, just like my little altar servers did for a wedding, 
they recognized a moment to share. Maybe if we too are able to share our faith and invite others to follow, they too will have an encounter with Jesus Christ. And they too, like good old Bartimaeus, from that moment on, won't be able to see their path through life as anything other than following Jesus. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us present our needs and petitions to our Heavenly Father. We pray for our church and our parish family that we may seek to follow Christ by becoming a community of compassion and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in elected office and all those who serve us in, in government, that they may uphold and protect the sacred dignity of every person. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are mentally, physically, or emotionally impaired, that they may be given the grace and wisdom to, to find and to use their gifts for the benefit of the entire human family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are lost and troubled, who are mired in fear and despair, for those who feel abandoned by God, that with our help and support, they may embrace the love and hope of the Father, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray for all those who have died, that they may one day awake and rise in the light of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as you know, each week um, I do check the, the comments and um, any intentions that, that you add or prayer petitions, I add them to my own. So let's pause now and uh, present to the Lord our own needs and petitions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of light, restore us with your vision of selfless love so that we may make real in our lives the prayers and hopes that you alone see. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. accepted by you, O Lord, and that our sacrifice in your sight this day may be pleasing to you, Lord God. And Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, look on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads to you, the truth that sets us free, and the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels we proclaim your glory, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray 
that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. This, of course, is the time that is most difficult for Catholics who aren't able to come to church and to attend um, Mass and to celebrate in person. Because, you know, nothing, nothing can replace actually receiving Jesus in the Eucharist and being able to praise God at Mass. But um, we know, you know, if th those that aren't coming, it's through no fault of their own. And the church, the church recognizes that Jesus isn't confined by anything when it comes to being present to his people. And so at this moment, if you unite your desire to receive Jesus and the desire to, to have him be part of your life with the desire that Jesus Christ himself has to be with us, then we believe that in, in that prayer right now, the Lord does become present in our hearts and in our souls. And we call that spiritual communion. So let's make a prayer of spiritual communion now.
And let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, so that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thanks so much for joining with us as we, we prayed Mass. Um, I, I do look forward to the opportunity to, uh, to pray with you. And even though we never get to see each other, I really do feel the, the presence that we have to one another and as we pray together. So we'll see you again next week.